looking forward to your talk. Thank you, Fritz. Thank you very much for the invitation, Christoph. Um, warm welcome here in Zurich. It's very nice. It's a great pleasure to speak here. Elastography overview and usefulness. As you all know, elastography combines the morphological information you get by B-mode ultrasound and the oldest um, examination, estim yeah, examination technique, the tissue stiffness estimation, and you get the elastography image, a tissue stiffness imaging. The problem is that we know that the different types of um, tissue in the breast have very different young modulus um, values. So if you look here, the fatty tissue, for example, has young modulus values of 18 to 24 kilopascal. You look at the glandular tissue up to 66 kilopascal, the fibrous tissue up to 244, and then the problem comes cancer varies between 22 and 560 kilopascal if you measure the stiffness. We know different techniques. It started first with elastography by mechanical, mechanical compression. As you see here, a very small hypoechoic lesion in the breast here in the second plane. And if you look here, the scale blue for hard in this system, red for a very soft lesion. And here the overlaying elastography, it's an overall green tone, so that's a very soft lesion. And this turned out in histopathology as a fibroadenoma. Another example, a speculated hypoechoic lesion here in the B mode. And as you see here, it's overall blue. And also in the dorsal part of the lesion, there you see a corresponding blue color. So a very, very stiff lesion. And this is a Ueno score 5, the Tsukuba score. And this turned out as an invasive ductal cancer. Other techniques from other manufacturers work with um, cardiac compression or spontaneous by respiratory, which we use here with that system. Here, red is hard and blue is soft, so quite the opposite of the Japanese um, technique we saw before. The, all, the whole lesion is very red, so a very stiff lesion, a speculated lesion with a hyperreflexive wall, this is easier by its five lesion. This is a cancer. A short overview over the literature with elastography and mechanical forces. It started with one of the most important works done by Ueno and by Ito in 2006, published in Radiology. They found out a sensitivity of almost 87% and a specificity of about 90%. The cutoff was set between elasticity scores 3 and 4 in 111 lesions. Also, Anne Tardivon from Paris did a lot of work with elastography. Also, sensitivity is about 80%, specificity about 87%. But she found certain false negative lesions, which were scored according to the Byrates classification by B mode as a Byrates 4 or 5 lesion out of 122 breast lesions. Also, we did um, a study um, looking at the elastography published in European Radiology. Also, cut off between scores 3 and 4. A high sensitivity was 96%. A lower specificity was 76% in 193 lesions, all histologically confirmed. And also, we had two false negative lesions, which were Byrates 5 findings in B mode ultrasound. An important work was done by Wojcinski et al. A multi-center trial. The largest uh, trial was almost 800 lesions, high specificity of almost 90% and a high positive predictive value. Let me tell you something about the ongoing projects with different technologies, the shear wave elastography. And this is one important work with an extremely large patient sample with 1,800 patients, a multi-center trial, and the question was whether we have added or um, important information if we add shear wave elastography to the B-mode ultrasound. So the question, can we improve lesion conspicuity and specificity of breast ultrasound diagnosis? 
when shear wave information is added to the B mode ultrasound. The first thousand um, women were reported in the data in the publication in Radiology 2012, written by Wendy Burke for the multi-center study. And the, we were looking at the potential downgrade of BIRITS for A masses with benign features and the shear wave elastography to a follow-up group, and looking for potential upgrade of BIRITS 3 masses if they have suspicious features to upgrade them for biopsy if these features are suspicious. On that slide you see a lot of different shear wave elastography features. We were looking at the E-shape, the homogeneity, this is important, the maximum, the elasticity maximum, and the E-color. So these three, E-homogeneity, maximum, and color, these are really very important features. In this table, you see what we consider as benign and what we consider as malignant. Shear wave elastography, if it's homogeneous, it's a sign for benign findings. Emax, less than 80 kilopascal. And E color, dark blue or blue. On the other hand, suspicious on shear wave elastography, a heterogeneous behavior a very high elasticity maximum over 160 kilopascal and the red color, so red for dangerous as all over the um, Western world, the stop sign, be careful. So assumptions were Byrits, three lesions, Byrits 2 lesions are benign and no upgrades should be done on the shear wave appearance. And also Byrits 4B, C and 5 lesions, they always are going to biopsy. Nevertheless, there's any shear wave appearance um, going for a benign finding or for anything else. Here on that scale, you see it starts with black, goes up to red, so that very stiff lesion. Here was 180 kilopascal, and here you see a Byrit 3. Um, we see um, combined with a yellow finding up to red finding, so upgrade this for biopsy. And on the other hand, the Byrits 4A finding combined with a turkey's color or a blue color or a black color, we could downgrade to a Byrits 3 finding and to go for only follow up. On the next slides, you see some examples. This is easy, just a simple cyst. Shear waves do not propagate in liquids or in cysts. So this could be also an advantage, especially for complicated cysts made to prevent the patients from further cytological um, confirmation of a benign finding if you have a liquid uh, lesion. Another case here, a hypoechoic lesion, very well defined, a Byrit 3 finding. And you look here in the region of interest, um, overall blue tone, very homogeneous shear wave appearance, a oval lesion. E maximum was 35 kilopascal. This was biopsied and turned out as a complex fiber adenoma combined with a scler adenosis. If you look at this lesion, a hypoechoic lesion on the dorsal part, not very well defined. We call this a Byrits 4 lesion. And if we look here, a quite homogeneous um, finding in shear wave. Emax was only 22 kilopascal, and this was also um, biopsied and turned out as a complicated cyst. Another case, a speculated lesion here, a hyperreflexive wall not well defined, corresponding this lesion here, a red lesion, a very stiff lesion, and even if you look in the um, surrounding of this lesion, it seems that this lesion is maybe a little bit larger than it appears here on the BMOD ultrasound. This is one question which we cannot answer so far. Is there additional information maybe according to the tumor size? Have we more information? Are we closer with shear wave elastography to the pathologic finding? So are we maybe better to um, say to the um, surgeon to excise a larger specimen to prevent patients from, um, yeah, from re-exquisition of uh, tumors because we have not um, clear margins. 
Another case, a patient showed up with a finding in the axillary region. This is a B-mode finding, a hyperechoic lesion, pretty close to the subcutaneous fat um, tissue with a dorsal inhomogeneous um, finding here. And you see it's a very stiff lesion in the shear wave elastography. And also this we call the Byrats 4 finding. We biopsied and it turned out as a invasive ductal cancer, which was quite hyper um, echoic. So a very rare case. Here the performance of Byrats and reclassification tests with added shear wave variables. Upgrade Byrats 3 is expected to increase sensitivity, but to decrease specificity. On the other hand, if you downgrade the Byrats 4 findings, you can expect an increasing specificity, but a decreased sensitivity. So if you combine both, the bilateral rule, doing both allows increasing specificity while you preserve the sensitivity and the negative predictive value. And here are the main data from the radiology paper in this table. We look here at e-homogeneity, and um, in this group we see we have a 71 percentage of specificity. If we look at the B mode, the pure B mode, we have only 61 percent of specificity, so more than 10 percent higher specificity. If we look at E maximum, we see that we have now 77% of specificity, while we preserve sensitivity with 97% compared to also 97.2% in the pure B mode. And even E color, 78.5% in specificity and a very high sensitivity of 98.6%. Here again the paper published in radiology. Another question we were looking at was, can additional shear wave features may support downgrading Byrates 3 findings to a Byrates 2? This is published last um, October in European Ultrasound, and here are the main data out of this paper. If we look here, Byrates combined with e-color, black or dark blue, we see that we have out of 212 Byrates 3 lesions, we see that we have 110 more lesions which we pre um, prevent from further short-term follow-up, so lesions which we can downgrade from Byrates 3 to Byrates 2. And also if we look at Byrates combined with elasticity maximum, each lesion with an elasticity maximum of less than 20 kilopascal um, brought us to the situation that we can have 80, 48 more patients in the Byrates 2 group, in the new Byrates 2 group. So at the end, each shear wave feature added to the Byrates increased specificity of breast ultrasound. And the best models with highest clinical impact were upgrading the subset of the Byrates refindings masses to biopsy if elasticity maximum is higher than 160 kilopascal or if e-homogeneity is not homogeneous or e-color is red. Downgrading subset of Byrates 4a masses to follow up if elasticity maximum is less than 80 kilopascal. And overall, 29 to 34 percent absolute increase in specificity was insignificant loss of sensitivity. And we had no malignancies in the Byrates 3 group if we combine this with an elasticity maximum stiffness of 20 kilopascal or E color is black or blue. And conclusion elastography overall nevertheless of shear wave elastography or mechanical elastography, we try to reduce the unnecessary biopsies. We have to maintain less than 2 or 3 percent malignancy rate in the Byrates 3 group according to the Byrates lexicon. We need further prospective validation. We should not touch the Byrates 2 lesion to upgrade. And at the end, shear wave elastography and strain elastography
can complement conventional ultrasound to improve the diagnostical performance. Thank you.